Hello everyone, and welcome. My name's Steve Walker. I'm an actor, voiceover artist, radio presenter, YouTuber, and still finding my feet in the world of podcasting. This is Camping on the Wild Side. So hello everyone and welcome back to Camping on the Wild Side podcast. So if you've been here before, thank you very much for coming back, I appreciate it. If you're new to this podcast show or a new listener, thank you very much for stopping by, I appreciate it as well. Uh, glad to have you on board. This is a new thing for me. I run Camping on the Wild Side YouTube channel, you can check that out. And basically I'm a wild camper around Scotland. And I go to different areas, I film my little adventure and put it on YouTube. And the podcast is a little spin-off from each of these videos, giving you a kind of insight of how I do things. Good or bad, it just the way it is, the way it pans out. So yes, this is a podcast for the Bothy Box, which I already have on YouTube. So you can check that out if you fancy, I'll give you all the details at the end. So, where did we start with this? So my daughter Charlie, I'll take you right back to the start, back in January, mid-January I should say. So my daughter Charlie messaged me that she had time off work to go away on holiday. So if she fancied going away while camping, so she said, Dad, I've got holidays, can we go away while camping? I says, yes, straight away, love it. Okay, let's find out where we want to go. So we were batting back and forward with messages of how long have you got off? How far do we actually go? Where do we go? And she was wanting to bring her dog as well. So we're kind of tied to specific areas and what to do. So after a, after a while back, batting back and forward, we were also taking into consideration the, the weather. So mid-January up in Scotland, yes, it is pretty cold and plenty of snow kicking about and ice. So we sat down and came up with the idea, or I looked through that many books, that instead of a tent, why don't we go and stay in a bothy? So this would take the pressure off being cold in a tent, the cramped conditions in a kind of way. And we could maybe relax a wee bit more and enjoy a different setting. So this would allow it to snow, rain, whatever, and would be a pretty good shelter. And she can bring her dog as well, which was pretty cool. So now we had thought about a bothy. I turned to my bothy book, which I is my go-to thing. So I'll give you the details of this as well. And this is the Scottish Bothy Bible book by a guy called Jeff Allen. I love his books. 
about both A's and walks and things, so it's great. It's an amazing book, and he's got a huge selection of books anyway. He's got a good a good catalogue of books, I should say. So the book is a guide to Scottish Bothies and how to reach them, which is so helpful to many folk. So, on that note, what is a Bothie? For those who don't know, a Bothie, the term Bothie comes from the Gaelic word Bothan, B-O-T-H-A-N meaning a hut. Historically, a both is a small shelter or cottage built for our labourers. These are cottages that farmers and shepherds and they all used to stay in permanently up in the hills and valleys and glens. So they were with within their farming and working area. So as hill farming and estates got smaller and sold off, the workers declined. So these buildings then became derelict and then into a bit of disrepair because they weren't important to to maintain, should I say. So bothing became the word used for the activity for hill walkers, campers, outdoor people, just even walkers. It became a shelter where they stayed in. So coming forward a wee bit further, the... Bothies were then bought up by and taken over by the Mountain Bothy Association, which I'll give you details at the end as well. So they have a website. So basically they took on board these Bothies, maintained them, built them up, made them watertight, put a wee fire in, and allowed people, the public, to stay in them. So they were basically an emergency, it was basically an emergency shelter to stop by. Not just for an emergency, but if you were passing by and it was you needed somebody somewhere safe to put your head down, these were the choice to do. Because we'd picked the bothies, we were, we came up with the idea of visiting two bothies to get as much out of there as possible. Because we were away for three days. So I thought it was a great idea. If we could choose two bothies, technically they weren't too far away, so we from each other so we had plenty of time to to enjoy it so the two bothies were picked and these are I'm going to be these are YouTube videos already so I'll be doing a podcast about these two videos but this podcast is mostly about the bothy box so I thought while we're going away to two bothies and I know these are an emergency stop by buildings I thought I had a light bulb moment so as a wild camper, when you're sorting through your kit, then deciding what to take, and then deciding what I really don't need, and then repacking my bag again. Then you put your rucksack on in your bag. You decide to take even more out to make it as light as possible. So as the bag gets lighter, and you see the extra items that are lying in the pile, which you're not taking, you always seem to overpack. That's the thing. I think every camper goes through that. Then this got me going with putting items that uh, into a box that I thought would be quite handy for others to use. So I thought it was a great idea that it was like a little emergency kit that I could take with me, fill it, uh, fill it with items and leave it in the bothy. So as a wild camper, I've had years of experience of what breaks what's necessary, what's unnecessary, what what kind of vital equipment goes wrong and um, the, the kind of emergency stuff that you would require. So like a shoelace breaking or a zip bursting or some matches, all that kind of stuff. So what to put in this bothy box was quite an easy decision. I wouldn't put food in it, for sure, because food just goes... I mean, I don't, don't know about anybody else, but I probably wouldn't pick food up and eat somebody else's food that was left in a bothy because you don't know how long it's been lying there, what's been crawling over it, and so on. So, what would be useful to me if I turned up at a bothy and I was needing an emergency kit? So, items that we thought of were that would be handy were matches, um, simple things like paper, 
and the paper would be for helping light a fire or for writing notes on for, for some reason. But anyway, matches get wet, paper for lighting a fire, small candles, because most of these bothies are actually quite dark. It might be light outside. And when you're on that dusk sort of time, it's still a bit light outside at some point. It's very dark in a bothy. So a, a couple of candles, just like tea light candles, but we sort of put in the, the eight hour ones, which would last most of the night. So a couple of candles, lighter, just in case matches don't work and all that. Small game. So we actually put in a, a packet of cards and solitaire. So it was just a tiny, little, simple game that would maybe amuse people at some point. Plasters, sealed obviously, a bandage, which, you know, the, the first aid kit, I know most people would normally carry them anyway, but sometimes people, we're only human, sometimes people forget things, maybe they've put one on already and, it, and it's the only one they've got, you need to replace that one. So we put in a selection of plasters and bandages, some pens and pencils, never know, somebody might just want to write in, in the a diary of up their upkeep or write a message or something like that. So, yeah, pens and pencils are always handy. Some pegs for hanging socks and jackets and items of clothing of some sort on. Normally there's coat hooks and things, but we put in pegs anyway, which was we thought was a good idea. Notebook. Cable ties was a new one. Cable ties, I thought, would do as a zip think normally when people break their zip there's that little bit of metal that's still there but you can't pull it up with your finger and you can't get a bit of string through so putting a wee cable tie and tying it a little bit and having it dangling down was a was a an option of some sort even for part of your rucksack if you had damaged a part of your rucksack or your zip had went in your rucksack, or, or just needed some to tie something together. These cable ties were, were pretty handy. Elastic bands, just for the usual tying things together. Carabiner clips. They weren't expensive by any means. They were just sort of basic ones, but I think that's quite a, a a handy thing as well for just hanging stuff on your your rucksack. Yeah, again, they're they're quite good. String always handy paracord as well. So the difference between string and paracord is obviously the thickness and the strength. String is just like your normal day-to-day -day use. Paracord is basically is, is a tougher type of cord. Yes, you can get to different thicknesses and obviously different colours. So just, just a little bit of paracord. Micropore tape for, I thought that would be an easy one for tying up your cuts and grazes and things like that, I think, or, or securing a bit of a bit of bandage or plaster on and we put in a couple of ponchos now these are not expensive by any means I'm just meaning ones that you could probably pick up at a festival or something so it was a basic a pack of two ponchos somebody might find them useful others might not so it's it you can't please everybody and I, I think you just have to take it as it is what's in this box so there was loads of more stuff that we put in this little tin and it, it's probably an endless little box what you could put in it. So they were just a selection of, of the items that we put in into our newly named Bothy box. And I think we were both pretty chuffed actually because it was one of these things it's, it's just taking a little time out your day. Yes, it's a big it's a big thing to carry. Well, I mean a big thing, it was just a not as not as big as a biscuit tin, but if you if you just went with a biscuit tin size, that's roughly your guide. You're not taking a huge thing that you need a wheelbarrow to carry in. Anyway, it was a small helpful gesture to those in need of emergency items that I thought would save save them in some sort of way, or just make them very happy that the somebody had thought about it. So we didn't put. As I say, we didn't put food in it because we thought you never know where food goes off and all that stuff. And potentially mice crawling over everything as well. We did put it in a tin for that 
obvious reason that it didn't rot, it didn't get damp, and mice in these bothies, you know, you never know. So they're not crawling all over it. So we placed it in, a, in the tin, keeping everything sort of secure and, and dry in a way. And because we were going to two bothies, we actually made two tins. And they're not all going to have the same items. So we just uh, made two different tins up altogether, both the boxes, which I thought was... Uh, we were actually chuffed. It was quite a nice thing to do. So yes, we carried them to the bothy. Um, it didn't really take up much room, and we felt it was a small gesture in a way. So carrying this little tin, along with all my other stuff, it was a little bit of hassle, but I think that the gesture at the end of it, knowing that people could use this, spurred me on to actually carry it. So each tin was placed after our bothy stay. We placed it in the in, on the table, the little note in it, just saying who I was and why I was doing it. So hopefully they find it helpful. And more importantly, yes, save their skin of some sort and help them out in any way I can. So leaving it there and allowing people to use items also gave me the thought that letting them know that if they wanted to use items um, free, freely, yes, please do. And if you have any items that you maybe have a couple of, pass it on and put it back in the tin if if you want to. There's not they're not a it's not a necessary thing, but it was just a a small gesture back for taking things out the tin to put stuff back in it. So I did leave contact details in these bothies, and I have had a couple of messages through um, my YouTube channel um, video regarding that people do like it as a good idea. Not a lot of comments, but it's just early days, so we'll just see how it goes. So yes, it was a good thing to do, and it's nice to hear back that people have used items. So on that, if you were at a bothy, do you, or a bothy goer, or never done a bothy, but if you were to turn up and there was a box of items, games, plasters, all that stuff that I've mentioned, would you find that helpful? Would you find it a good idea? If you don't find it a good idea and you think, why bother? There will be certain people that abuse it and take everything out of the box and so on and so on. But that's that's the way nature is and that's the way people are. I just done it off my own back to help others that appreciate it. So yes, if you find it's a good idea, it'd be great to go into the video if you can. And please leave a comment. I'd love to hear about it. Always open for comments. So if it's a good, if it's a good idea, please let me know. It'd be great. So this is just a wee short podcast for today. Just regarding this bothy box, I just thought I'd do this one first. So, okay. So if you're looking for more information from the, the websites, the, the book I mentioned, the bothy, the Scottish Bothy Bible, by Jeff Allen. You can check out that. Got it out of, obviously, your high street bookshops. You can check that out. Or you can go online. It's called The Scottish Bothy Bible by Jeff Allen. Always good if you're new to Bothy and Bothian or want to know more about Bothies. It's a good all-round book to do. He does walks and guides and all that as well. Good stuff. You also check out the Mountain Bothy Association or the MBA, and they're at www.mountainbothies.org.uk. And you can see all the bothies and where they're pictured and how they get to them as well, so it's pretty good. So, and my YouTube channel is Camping on the Wild Side, so you can go to uh, YouTube, type in Camping on the Wild Side, and you'll see my channel there. Please subscribe if you want to. Um, if you see any videos that you like, give me a thumbs up, give me a wee comment and I'll try and comment back to you if I can. But I'd love to have you on board. Uh, so you can check out some of the videos and you'll find out the Bothy one too. It's, uh, it's there, it's a good one. I also have a Facebook page and you can check me out at Camping on the Wild Side. And Instagram, 
we have one it's camping on the wild side scotland so you can go to these the social media you can check out photos links and updates on what i do and give me a like and a follow on that as well It'd be great to have you on board just have a wee comment that'd be amazing if you would so that's it for me i'm just going to wrap things up but this is a podcast you've been listening to camping on the wild side about the bothy box so we'll have plenty more podcasts coming up a few more videos to do as well when i'm out camping so if you see this uh you're listening to this and you'd like to subscribe please do you can share it um i'm all new to podcasting so i'm still finding my feet yet again <laughs> it's exciting it's all exciting so i will leave it here and wish you all the best you've been listening to me steve walker and this is a podcast from camping on the wild side cheers for now Thank you.